add-on desired. Hello viewers, welcome to Adult Solutions Daily Current Affairs. I'm Lokesh Pingunda. This session is designed for aspirants who are preparing for banking groups in search of the competitive examinations. We cover news articles from both the Hindu and the Indian Express. Make a use of this session. Due to a combination of technical difficulties and government imposed restrictions, several current affairs videos of last week could not be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Any inconvenience cost is regretted. First, we have an article where the Prime Minister of the country has brought in a comprehensive roadmap to start ethanol production in the country. Yesterday, we have observed the World Environmental Day. And on this day, the Prime Minister of the country, Mr. Narendra Modi, has first launched a pilot project. He has launched a pilot project in the city of Pune. And as a part of this pilot project, 100% ethanol fuel is being provided to customers. This is called as E100. That means 100% ethanol, which is also called as a pure ethanol. And after starting this pilot project in Pune, he has launched the comprehensive plan for ethanol production, ethanol production and blending in the country. So, first we'll see who has designed this ethanol production and blending plan. This plan is designed by the Ministry of Oil, Ministry of Oil along with the Niti Aayog, which is the top think tank of the government. And according to this comprehensive ethanol blending plan, the Prime Minister has stated the target of 20% ethanol blending is pre-poned. It is pre-poned from earlier 2030 year to 2025 year. That means we will have to achieve the 20% ethanol blending target by the year 2025. So what do you mean by ethanol blending? If we say 20% ethanol blending, it means that for every 1 litre of fuel, 20% would be ethanol. So, if you buy 1 litre of petrol, 800 ml will be petrol, 200 millilitres will be ethanol. So, why are you blending ethanol into this fuel? There are very many advantages for ethanol blending. First is, we know that India imports 85% of its crude oil. We import 85% of its cr our crude oil. And in the year 2020 and 21, we have spent nearly 550 billion dollars to import crude oil. And if we are able to blend ethanol with the fuel, we can, we can reduce this amount. So, let's assume that we are currently importing 1000 liters. And if we are able to mix 200 liters of ethanol to this fuel, we would not have to import the 1000 liters. So, we would be importing only 800 liters because the rest 200 liters will mix ethanol. So, on one hand, we will be reducing our import bill. And on the other hand, it will be helpful to the environment because ethanol is less polluting. It is less polluting. Next is, ethanol blending process will help farmers. How, how would ethanol blending help farmers? Ethanol is produced by using corn, sugar cane or any other food material and these are produced by farmers. So, if we are taking corn, sugar cane or other food items from farmers, we have to pay them. So, farmers income will also increase and the government will try to help them get more amount of money for their own produce. So, these are various advantages we get by ethanol blending. And you should also note that there are countries which have already achieved 100% ethanol blending. There are countries which have already achieved 100% ethanol blending. 
So we have countries such as Brazil, we have countries such as United States which have blended ethanol in its fuel at a very high percentage and they are able to get huge benefits out of it. You should also know that ethanol blending is not a new thing in India. In the year 2014, we were able to blend 1.5% of ethanol to other fuel. That means for every 1 litre, we were using nearly 150, nearly 15 ml as ethanol. And now, in the year 2021, we are having 8.5% ethanol blending. So, if you buy a litre of petrol or if you buy a litre of diesel, it means that 8.5% of it is ethanol. So, these all details are given here. You can see 1.5% in 2014, 8.5% now and we are aiming to achieve 20% ethanol blending by 2025. This is according to the comprehensive roadmap which is officially launched by the Prime Minister of the country. Next we have an article where the G7 nations have finally agreed upon uniform minimum corporate tax. Yesterday in our daily news analysis session we have seen how the G7 grouping ha is having a discussion regarding the bringing of uniform minimum corporate tax and now they have finally agreed upon this tax and they have stated that the minimum corporate tax would be 15% that means any corporate even if it is even if it is shifting its headquarters from one country to other it would still have to pay 15% of its profit as corporate tax to one country or the other so we'll see the major advantage of bringing in this minimum tax earlier there are private companies which are shifting their headquarters to countries which are called as tax haven countries to tax haven countries so what are these tax haven countries we can have the examples of bermuda cayman islands virgin islands hong kong cyprus so these are the countries which have a very small corporate tax so let's assume that the corporate tax these countries charge is 2% so what the private companies do is rather than paying higher amount of taxes to countries such as united states or india they will generally shift their headquarters to these countries where they would have to pay only a small amount of tax and according to a estimate given by the TJN study it has found out that every year nearly 427 billion dollars worth revenue is being wasted or could not be collected by companies due to this tax haven companies tax haven countries and also it stated that India alone has lost 10.3 billion dollars on average every year due to this global tax abuse so to prevent all these uh, loss of revenue the g7 nations have finally agreed upon the 15 percent as minimum corporate global tax next we'll see in brief about this g7 g7 is a intergovernmental grouping of developed of developed democracies and we can see in this image the seven countries that are part of this grouping that is the Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom and United States. You should also know that this G7 grouping, this G7 grouping was established in the year 1975 and there is no permanent headquarters. There is no permanent headquarters to this group. Next we have an article which is talking about a jihadist attack in the country of Burkina Faso. In the image you can see Burkina Faso, it is a landlocked West African country. And you can also see the capital of Uga Duga. So Uga Dugo is the capital of Burkina Faso. And yesterday in a jihadist or a Islamic state sponsored attack, nearly 114 civilians has lost their lives and you should also know that 
it is bordering the countries of Mali and Niger. Why are we discussing about the neighboring countries? Because after attacking the civilians in the northern part of the Burkina Faso, these Islamic states sponsored terrorists have fled to the neighboring countries, which will make difficult for Burkina Faso military officials to catch them and to neutralize them. Next, we have an article where several church groups are slamming the Austrian government regarding the bringing of something called as an Islamic map. So in the image, you can see a map and you can see several markings in this map. These markings show where the Muslim associations and Muslim groups are living in the country of Austria. And by using this map, several people were able to target the Muslim minority community living in the country of Austria. And several Muslim members have lost their lives. And this Muslim map or the Islam map brought by a government sponsored organization is under heavy criticism by various activists. As this article is dealing about Austria, we'll also see where Austria is. Austria, you can see in this image, is a European country. And the capital of Austria is Vienna. So there are two important things that you should note from this article. First is the Islam map, which is sponsored by an organization supported by the government. And next is the capital of Austria, which is Vienna. Next, we have an article, which is talking about the UFOs. So UFOs are unidentified, unidentified flying objects, flying objects. And this week, the United States government has given a report regarding the UFOs. So if you have a question which is talking about the country which has given a report on the UFOs, it is the United States. And in the United States intelligence report, it stated that there is no there is no concrete evidence regarding the presence, regarding the presence or regarding the absence of aliens. So it is stating that we cannot confirm whether aliens exist. We cannot confirm whether aliens does not exist. So this is the conclusion given in this US intelligence report. Next, we have an article which is talking about chess championships. The FIDE, which stands for the International International Chess Federation. Chess Federation. It is bringing in a chess championship which is called as World Cadet and Youth Chess Championship. So FIDE is the organization which is bringing in the World Cadet and Youth Chess Championship. And next we have one more chess championship which is given in this article. This is the All India Chess Federation bringing in an online chess championship. So we have the All India Chess Federation which is planning to bring the online chess federation for minor children. So these are the two cham chess championships that are mentioned in this article. Next we have an article where the Punjab National Bank, where the Punjab National Bank has picked up a stake in a bad bank. So we have seen the finance minister of the country stating that in India they will bring in a bad bank and this is the official word this is the unofficial word used for National Asset Reconstruction Company. National Asset Reconstruction Company. So what is this bad bank or the National Asset Reconstruction Company? Let's assume that there is a bank A and bank A has given rupees 100 as loan to Mr. 123. So 123 is the person who has taken 100 rupees loan. But Mr. 123 not only failed to pay the principal amount that is 100 rupees, but also he might have even failed to pay the interest amount. So he failed to pay principal or interest or both. So if bank A, if it is not able to get back its 100 rupees, 
then the 100 rupees will be a loss the bank has to face. So what the bank A will do is, bank A will sell this loan record, this loan record or loan account to one more bank which is generally called as a bad bank and this bad bank is the unofficial word used for asset reconstruction company. So let's assume that there is a asset reconstruction company or the bad bank and this bad bank is willing to buy this 100 rupees account or the 100 rupees loan. That means the bad bank will take this 100 rupees account from bank A and instead it will pay 80 rupees or 70 rupees that means the money which it have to pay will depend on both of these banks. So what would happen is from now onwards it is not the bank A which has provided loan to 1, 2, 3 but rather it is the bad bank which has paid 100 rupees to Mr. 1, 2, 3. So the 100 rupees loan account which bank A has will be shifted to the bad bank and now it will be the bad bank which will have to retrieve or which will have to get back the 100 rupees it has paid to Mr. 123. So what will be the advantage for the bad bank if bad bank is able to get the entire amount of 100 rupees back then it will be able to get 20 rupees profit because it is buying 100 rupees account at a discounted price of 80 rupees or 70 rupees and in the and in the years to come if it is able to get the entire amount then this difference amount will be the profit the bad bank will get so many banks if they have any bad loans they will simply transfer these bad loans to the bad bank and in this image and in this article you can see that 8000 crores worth bad loans will be transferred to a bad bank which is called as the national asset reconstruction company so this is with respect to the bad bank or the national asset reconstruction company you should also write down this amount of 8000 crores next we have an article which is talking about a alternative alternative micro blogging site micro blogging site to Twitter. Earlier in our current affairs session we have seen how the government of Nigeria has blocked Twitter for two days for, for, for the Twitter blocking the president's tweet and now Ku is planning to open its services in the country of Nigeria. So Ku is an Indian company, it is an Indian private company which is started as an alternative to the micro blogging site Twitter. So we have Twitter at the global level and now we have Indian brand which is named as Ku which is providing alternative services to Twitter and it is planning to enter the Nigerian market as well. And with this we have come to the end of the session. Inform about Adult Solutions Current Affairs Initiative to your other as friend friends and show us your support by subscribing and liking our YouTube channel. Thank you. Add on solutions. Add on desires.